more time. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Woo! <laughs> Come on, guys. We're usually a little more lively on Wednesday nights. It is beautiful weather out there tonight. It really is. Good time of the year. I hear there's another cold front coming. Cool? No? Okay. I just want to be sure. Yeah, that, that last Saturday business, it's like, what? <laughs> what? I packed all my winter. I'm lying. I don't have winter clothes. <laughs> they, they, you can't get cold enough for me. Aye, aye, aye. Well, uh, let's not forget Discovery Camp is coming, coming up for Renovate uh, Youth. That's that uh, first week in June, June 7th. Deadline for funds is May the 2nd, I believe. So we're coming up on the deadline We've been talking about just really believing that uh, I want to believe that every one of these kids can cannot have to pay uh, because we're going to scholarship them all. Uh, and some additional numbers I've gotten as a result of some uh, blessings that come from other sources, uh, we've got like 10 kids, six through the church and then four that come from another source for some of the kids. So... Uh, you know, 10 of those kids at last report, and we'll get an update on that with uh, Brother Heath and Haley on Sunday morning. Five? So now we're at 11. Okay. Well, okay. So now we've got a like, glory to God. So we've got 11 kids that are, that are paid for. And again, the camp is $125. I'm not telling you that you have to give 125 250 is great. 375 is better. 500 Man, we're talking great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, they said last time they, had, they went, to, he took 45 kids. That's a, that's a big passel of youngness. Yes, sir. Here, let me just. One of the great ways to develop your faith is you could even write, I'm pledging to send one, and it gives you a focus to believe God for that seed to come to you. And you'd be amazed how those things like that, believe for something <coughs> that you can believe for, yeah. you know. Don't believe for a million dollars. You ain't. You hadn't had a hundred come to you yet. Set, set reachable faith goals. But even right now, I pledge to, to sponsor one. And then believe God and watch. He said he'd give seed to the sower. That's good. That's good. So Lord lays that on your heart as that's an avenue for you. Step out, step out in faith, and, and, and let's go with it. And if you can sponsor half a kid, I'm not sure what we'll do with the other half, but we'll send, we'll send a half. We'll sponsor one. Okay, pastors are, are, are sponsoring one. So step out. We want, we want to send as many kids to this camp that who's not just the, the kids. How many of you know that our, our children read the barometer of our financial lives, uh, uh, you know, we, we as a couple always tried not to discuss finances in front of our kids. It just really purpose not to do that. But I can remember my son, glory to God, he and his, my beautiful daughter-in-law are back in Brownwood. <laughs> School pictures. We noticed one year, Blair, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't even see school pictures. What happened? Well, I thought we were broke. What? <laughs> I don't even know where he got that. None. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the first, it was a whole different story. It's like, school pictures? Okay, we're going to go pick up bottles or something. But uh, just know that they picked that up. And I don't want, it, it just would bless my heart, and I know it would be a blessing to the, to the kids and to their parents if they just didn't even have to worry about it. Just all they knew was, man, I'm going to camp. I don't, nobody has to worry about it. So whether you pledge it, whether you sow some or some uh, all or two or three or four, the, the abundance of the blessing on feeding into a child's life spiritually is immense. Because, you, you know, we talk about how the things we do in this life aren't just uh, relegated to our own little circle. You drop a pebble in that lake of, 
of all the people around you and those waves ripple out when you drop this pebble oh man it's huge for such is the kingdom of God mm. so re discovery camp coming up May 2nd is a deadline uh, just if you do scholarship whether a pledge whatever put it on the uh, on the envelope and make sure that it's you put on their renovate youth scholarship okay um, let me see birthdays this week Brenda Holland Derek Calloway, who is no longer Derek Bullard, <laughs> made that transition. Thank you, Jesus. And Michelle Little all celebrate this week. Double Digits Fun Day is coming up the 28th. Get with Brother Russell. Uh, this is going to be so much fun. It's going to be from 4 to 7. Uh, they're going to be out at the early game and skate. The admission is paid for. They are asking that you feed the babies before they come sure. uh, and be prepared to feed the babies when they get home from all that fun and skating. They're going to be hungry. Um, anyway, see Russell Coleman. He will be glad to, uh, and he does such a great job with Renovate Youth, and I like, his, I like his picture in there, that big. we got lots of smiling beards in this body, and he's a, he's a precious one of those. Yes. Okay, so we know that in, in Malachi, the word tells us that when we're tithers, he rebukes uh, the devourer. We know in Philippians how our seed is pressed down, shaped together, running over. We, I mean, we've got so many promises, and there are so many little things that come up. So we go to Walmart to buy a little, metal ta a, a little card table because we've got some Social Security folks come into our office tomorrow, and they're going to need some space. And the one that we had was broke. And I'm thinking, well, let's run to Walmart. We'll grab one real quick. And I walk up, and I see on the back of this table sitting by itself a little yellow tag, and it says $3.75. And I, my first thought is them silly kids that run around Walmart at night have been trading tags and this, that, and the other. And so I walk up, I pick it up, and sure enough, it says table, $3.75. Wow. And I'm looking around like, okay, is this a joke? <laughs> yeah, where's the camera? And so I look over here, and there's the table for $29.88. Here's the table for $3.75. It's like I'm running to the checkout right now. How many of you know that? I mean, and he, so all total, it was $4.06. Wow. Now, it was a used table, but it unfolds it. I mean, no biggie returned it. They could have used it for samples or, I mean, whatever the case may be. I mean, I've gotten some discounted stuff at Walmart, but never like that. That's excellent. I had a need, and he filled that need at a ridiculous <laughs> amount. So now I'm kind of thinking, well, Lord, where do you want that other $25 to go that I would have spent on that? <laughs> Goodbye. Blair. <laughs> Blair's going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God is good, and he's good all the time. Um, I was reading in Psalms uh, chapter 32, 31. This is verse 19. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all. How much has he stored up just for you? just for you there's so much for us so much even beyond a three dollar card table that's just that's nothing walk in the blessing we're tithers so the devourer is rebuked we're seed sowers so we get pressed down shaken together and running over we love the lord we know the name of jesus we get the exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think so don't ever let your mind limit what God can do for you because you're the only one will, that will limit what he can move into your life. That's good. Father, I thank you right now for this wonderful day, this wonderful time that we get to come together as family, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the oneness that we have together as a body. Yes. I thank you for, Lord, I thank you for your support supreme omnipotence Lord Father that you are God you are the God the one and only true God your son who died on the cross rose 
three days later, left that tomb empty, Lord Father, defeated the shackles of hell on our behalf, Lord Father, that he is our Lord and our Savior, and we know the name of Jesus. We know the power in the name, that name that is so worthy. And we thank you, Father, because you do provide seed to us as sowers, that, Lord Father, we receive the pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I thank you, Father, that you restore anything that the canker worm has eaten, that no weapon formed against us physically, spiritually, financially can prosper against us, Father. We love you, Father, and we thank you for this is the day that you've made. And, Lord, because your word says it will, this seed sown, the tithe that belongs to you, at this moment, as we've sown it in our heart, will be fruitful, and it will multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pastor Jay. Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. It's good to see all of you tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. The Lord is good. Yes, he is. And his mercy endures and endures and endures and endures. Sure appreciate all of you. I pray you had a good day. Whether you did or not, it doesn't change the fact that Jesus is Lord. And his, his mind is on you. Huh? And his plan and his purpose is still intact. No matter what might have come your way today, stay with the plan, saints. Stay with the plan. Say that with me. Stay with the plan. Stay with the plan. Like that radio operator was telling Luke Skywalker, hold, hold, when everything in you is wanting to break loose. Joy comes in the morning, I promise you. Let's look at something right quick. I have something on my heart, but when, right before I came up here, the Lord just boop, quickened this, and it just ties right in with what I believe the Lord would have us look at tonight. Go to 1 John 5, or 4, 1 John chapter 4, please. Faith comes how? Hearing what? Hearing the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to grant all of us an ear to hear your word. And by faith, we say we have an ear to hear the word. By faith, we believe we have a heart to grow the word. And we will to hold to the word. We thank you right now for your grace and your anointing that is the can-do for all of us. We thank you for angels ministering spirits that are sent forth and dispatched by the word of God to do service for the heirs of salvation that would be us. We submit ourselves to the word and to the spirit of God and to the lordship of Jesus Christ right now by faith. We thank you for your plan. We thank you for your purpose. We thank you for your gifts and your utterance. We expect tonight, we make an adjustment in our heart right now. We expect for the word to penetrate our soul and our heart. Amen. 1 John 4, let's, let's read a couple verses here and then we'll tie this in. 1 John 4, 16, please. When you got it, say amen. And we have known and believed the love 
that God has toward us. God is love. And he that lives in love lives in God. And God lives in him. <laughs> and in that, the Greek says, love with us is made perfect so that we may hold boldness in the day of judgment. You can have boldness in the day of judgment. It's going to come down to one thing. Did you learn to love? That's a different message, but anyway. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We're not born of this world. We're in this system, cosmos. When we say world, don't think earth. Don't think the earth. World is the is, is cosmos. It's the system through which this place we live in operates off of Satan is the God of this cosmos but God and really if you get right down to it Jesus Christ and if you really get down to it and boil that down he's given it to the heirs of salvation the earth belongs to the children of God blessed be Abraham possessor of heaven and earth boy we hadn't even scratched that scripture told that to a covenant man, the one he made covenant with. Blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. Well, the Bible says if you be children of faith, then you are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promises that he gave Abraham to. But I want us to just focus right here for a minute. Verse 18, there is no fear in love but perfected love casts say cast that's the Greek word kathiro we get the word catheter from it perfected agape love purges out fear because fear has or holds torment. He that fears, or we could say he that is tormented is not made, third time he uses this word, perfect in covenant love. When we say love, saints, don't just think, man, I love my truck. Man, I love my new job. Boy, I love mama's homemade buttermilk biscuits. We're talking, the New Testament would call it the word agape, which is the love of God. It would, it would best be thought of And we'll put an Old Testament Hebrew word and a New Testament Greek word together for just a second. Hesed agape. Hesed is translated in your Old Testament as the word kindness, loving kindness, show my kindness. It's the word that King David used when he said, is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness, hesed is the Hebrew word there, that I may show hesed to for Jonathan's sake. Come on now. David and Saul the king, Saul's son Jonathan, had made a covenant with each other that tied them two together for the rest of time. 
it also by custom and by that type of covenant tied their seed to that covenant and each other because of the covenant made between daddy and daddy. Are you following me yet? Say covenant. Whoo, man. You, you can't say a, a stronger word. Say covenant. <laughs> David said, is there anybody? He has a compelling urge coming up in him. Hesed is something, it's a force. I, I'm driven to do this, is Hesed. God so loved that he gave Hesed. Are you with me? David said, is there anybody left of the house of Saul? King Saul, his son Jonathan. Jonathan and David made a covenant. Is Now David is king and he says, is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I might show Hesed to for Jonathan's sake? This is, listen to me, saints. This is for covenant's sake. Woo Say for covenant's sake. Well, you know, I've fallen. Well, join the crowd. Jesus hasn't. Well, that's good. I want to just say something here. Listen, you can't empty the ocean with a five-gallon bucket in one setting, okay? So obviously you can't cover every aspect. But I want to just say a few things about this, the root of covenant. God didn't cut a covenant with you, so you can't break the covenant. Hmm. Really? Really? God made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 17. He said, my covenant is with you. See, many times people think God made a covenant with Israel. No, 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 no. God made a covenant with Abram. And when he made that covenant, when God took animals and those, God told Abraham, Abram, take animals and sacrifice them. There's bloodshed. Covenant is made with blood and words. Blood and words. Say that, blood and words. Where you have blood and words, you have covenant. Blood and words. Jesus bled, he said, it is finished. Blood covenant. Huh? One example, one part of one example. God, God told Abram, he said, take those animals and sacrifice them. When those animals are brought to the altar, they are substitution for God. They're, they're, they're his part of blood being shed. Then he told Abram to circumcise himself. Covenant means quote to cut it suggests quote an incision where blood flows now that is what covenant means quote to cut suggesting the idea an incision where blood flows. The animals laid on the altar and their blood, Abraham fillets them the way that you did in this, right down the backbone and a half falls here, half falls here. Then Abram circumcises himself. Listen, there's to cut and blood shed. Both shed blood. Both released words. 
the Bible says that Abraham believed God and believing was counted, imputed by God to him for righteousness. That word believe in Hebrew, it's not just a, a, a trust. It Literally, the, the Hebrew says Abraham made an unqualified committal to God. Just he, he abandoned himself. It means to go into one. Abraham abandoned self and just went into God by faith. And God said, that's righteousness. Now listen, that was way before the law ever came out. And Abraham was justified by faith. Just an insert here. It doesn't have anything to do with this really. But you go after the law, well after the law, King David. David was justified by faith. So you have a man that was justified by faith before the law. You have a man that was justified by faith after the law. Neither justified by the law. So animals are here. Abraham is circum Abram is circumcised. It's interesting that when God made covenant, listen, with Abram, he, if you'll study it, he lifted them into the royal family this way. You're no longer Abram. You're Abraham. She's no longer Sarah. She's Sarah. And he plugged in the H-A. Some of us have heard this, but you, you can't exhaust this. He plugged in God himself, one of his own names, Hashem, H A. S-H-E-M, Hashem, which means the name, the name. Say Hashem, the name. He takes A-B-R-A-M, and now that they are blood covenant partners, and he's lifted into, by God, into a covenant relationship by bloodshed, God gives him his name and he takes Ha of Hashem and he plugs it in A-B-R-A-M A-B-R-A-H-A and put the M on. Abraham, father of many nations. Are you with me? <laughs> So now, he has the name. He is in blood covenant with his covenant partner, Almighty God. That covenant, saints, listen to me. God said many times, my covenant is with you. Listen, the covenant wasn't with the promise was unto the seed, but the covenant was with Abraham. And I want to say this. This makes this more robust. The promises are unto the seed, but the covenant is with Jesus. I can't break the covenant. I wasn't in on the making of the covenant. Now that just rubs religiousness just like a cat hair backward. People get mad at you for talking like that. <sighs> How can you say that? Sin for the believer breaks fellowship, not relationship. Now, enough of it will violate and it'll, 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 uh, you won't have much of a relationship, but it doesn't nullify relationship. Let me ask you this. Say a father or a mother had a baby for whatever reason. Let's say that child is now 14 years old and neither one of the parents have ever laid eyes on that child. And there's a lot of that. That's true. 
Let me ask you this. Does it mean that that daddy is not that baby's daddy? Just because there's not fellowship didn't mean there's not relationship. Doesn't mean that blood doesn't run through that baby's blood too. Well, huh? Yeah. So God lifts them into this place of royalty. The royal family gives him his name. Well, you can track that all the way to Ephesians 3.14. He says, for this cause, Paul said, for this cause, this is to the believer, right? Ephesians. He said, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Subject is the Father. That's the noun we're talking about. The Father, whom the whole family, family of God in heaven, those that have gone to heaven, and the family of God in earth is named Named. You're named. Bible also says by the Holy Spirit, you've been marked. Listen, now we've got name Abraham. We're also named ones. And we've got a mark. And the Bible says the Spirit of God has marked you. Bible says Abraham was circumcised in the old covenant. That was the mark of covenant. That's why David said to the giant, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That's all that David need to know. He's not circumcised, which means he's not in covenant with God. <laughs> Enough said. You lose. David knew that. Well, you take that over here. We have the name. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. He inherited that, Hebrews 1 through 4 tells us. He inherited the name, not a name higher than the other name, the name. And he said, go in my name. And the Spirit of God has marked you. And many times in the New Testament, it says that you've been circumcised not just with man's hands, which is just removing of the excess flesh. But the Bible says you've been circumcised by the Spirit of God in your heart. Huh? True circumcision is that of the heart. Are you getting anything out of this? Saints, we're covenant people. When God made that blood covenant with Abraham, that blood covenant bound God to Abraham. He has to be faithful to him. He has to protect him. He has to provide for him. Has to. It's a blood covenant. Stanley and Livingstone they were involved in more blood covenant ceremonies than probably any human. They were both uh, in deep Africa. <clears throat> I didn't know I was going to share all this. This is good. While there, you'd be amazed at how many blood covenants are enacted upon and still enacted upon. And a lot of them have gotten completely grotesque, but at its root, it, there, there is, uh, it started off, the root of it, no matter how perverted and other spirits get involved in it, it's still words, an exchange of gifts, and bloodshed. That goes all the way back to the garden. When God covered Adam. And just for our sake tonight, it, it definitely goes back to the blood covenant God cut with Abram. Words, cut, bloodshed. And while they were over there, they said Stanley was involved. He, he was witnessed over 50 blood covenant ceremonies. Uh, blood covenant was usually done by a weaker tribe wanting the protection, the help, uh, and the assets of a stronger and larger tribe. So 
a, a weaker in a, in a covenant, you would, you would, oh, this is so good. You would choose one out of the whole family that, that pretty much sums up the whole family. I mean, the whole family is, is pictured in that one and he's gonna go out for you. Representing the family, he's going to either the wrist or the hand and they're gonna let blood run down their elbow, drip into a cup of wine. Then the other man that represents the, the tribe or the family, he's gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stir the wine cup. I'm gonna drink half of it. He's gonna drink half of it. And then we're gonna rub and my blood and his, where blood is mingled. We are now blood brothers. He, he got into a huge need and there was a, a chieftain. This is a true story. There was a chieftain in deep Africa that was fairly close. Stanley, young black man, he asked the chieftain if he could enter into covenant. Well, first of all, there's an interview. They want to know your motive and why you want in on this. He let them know, you know, obviously you're stronger, yada, yada, I need this, I need, I need protection, I need this. Listen, man, this, this whole thing is still just perverted and that's, that gets into gangs, that gets into prison survival. Come on, yeah. it's covenant. Yeah, well, Stanley, all he had was a, a little white goat and Stanley had him because his stomach stayed ill and all he could drink was goat's milk. The chieftain said, I don't know how he said it, me want goat, whatever, but he said, he said he wanted Stanley's little white goat. And Stanley, he thought, man, I, I have to have that goat. But he gave this warrior chieftain that goat. That chieftain in turn, see, now listen, there's words being exchanged and there's an exchanging of gifts. Jesus said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There was, there was words, there was bloodshed, there was an exchange. Gifts. Gifts of the Spirit. Every time you see a gift of the Spirit in operation, you're seeing covenant in action. Huh? That chieftain took the white, little white goat and handed Stanley a seven-foot copper-wound spear and Stanley, you can read about it. He thought, oh man, what am I gonna do with this? He can barely carry it. He said, man, I got the raw end of this deal. But now he has covenant. And at any legit needed time, he, the one in covenant, the covenant exchange is, if in a legit need, I can call on anything that my covenant partner has and it's mine. And the covenant partner knows the same thing. And those covenants ran so deep and so true that even the children knew about it. I mean, uh, uh, strong enemies, when they found out about the covenant, they were instant okay with each other because of the blood covenant that was shed. What Stanley found out is everywhere he went with that spear, everybody bowed down to him and submitted to him. If we just keep growing in the spear that the covenant partner gave us called in my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name, there's our spear. In my name, resist the devil and he will. Hmm? Are you with me, somebody? I'm gonna tell you what, we're the covenant ones, not a bunch of needy ones. We're high and lifted up. He hath made us to sit with him in the heavenly places. He ain't the only one come out the tomb. Bible says you were raised with him. Colossians 3, 1, if you be risen with him, seek those things which are above. There's things for us. Hmm? Everywhere he went, everybody bowed down to him, submitted to him. 
because of what the covenant part, they knew that spear. And I want to remind you, all devils, all principalities, they know the name. They, Jesus would go to cast the devil out and that devil would talk through that person loud. It says, I adjure you by God not to torment me and send me into the flames. They know where they're headed. They know there's a time coming. They knew he was the son of God. Isn't that wonderful? Man, I mean use your authority. <laughs> Rebuke thoughts and rebuke devils quit don't it, it's a good place to start but I'm, take you to another level you come against those thoughts don't just talk to God about it you rebuke them huh I'm talking about the authority of the believer the believer's authority all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me go in my name in my name you will cast out devils he said Mark 16 in my name, in my authority, in my character, in all that I represent, if you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. Man, claim that thing. There's a reason we bless the food. It's not to be religious. It's because we got to consume it. And really, if you want to get right down to it, you ought to pray about it while it's being cooked in the kitchen that you can't see before you get it. I mean, really, if you're going to really be effective, that's when you ought to pray over it. Come on. I mean, it's worth a thought. I believe it's true. Especially if you done mouthed off and hacked off the waitress and the chef and the cook and... Hey, where's my food? You sorry, blankety blank, blankety blank. And then they hear you, oh, Heavenly Father, and they go, yeah. Yeah, you the real deal. <laughs> hey, where's my hot sauce, you slow poke? They go, well, there's, there's some, <laughs> almost that stuff. There's some, how do you clean this up? Yeah, there's some, person out here that cooks like yeah we'll show him then you leave the next day say y'all's food said okay yeah mine was fine <laughs> there's a reason we bless it in the name we're told we live in that name John 17 Jesus' prayer he said father I have kept them in your name. He did not say, in your name I kept them. He said, I kept them in your name. Think about this, Proverbs. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. Into what? What's it? The name and they are saved. You could just put sozo in right there. They are healed, set free, provided for, delivered and protected. Yes, All that is in the name. When I say name, I'm not just talking about J-E-S-U-S. -S. There's a lot of people named Jesus. It's the name that has been given to the man named Jesus. Are you hearing that? It's what has been, he received the name and received their means to receive by divine allotment. It was allotted to him by God. This is ever bit scriptural, this right here. And it better be or we wouldn't say it. Hashem, the name gave him Hashem. You can say it this way, and there's scriptures to prove it out. Jehovah calls him Jehovah. Yes, sir. Good. Huh? Therefore, God, even your God, God called Jesus a resurrected man, God. Therefore, God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. You have hated iniquity and love righteousness. Your scepter is forever and ever. God called a resurrected man 
God. Are you here, somebody? Back to John 5. My word. It's already 749. I ain't even got on my paper yet. <laughs> we getting anything yet? We are in covenant, saints. And this covenant is built on better promises and on better blood. Blood that still speaks. The blood covenant, Jesus, listen, that blood is screaming redemption for you. The blood of Abel is looking for revenge. The blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Man, listen, that blood, I, many times I didn't know what to say. And I would say, I agree with the blood of Jesus. I agree with what the blood is saying about me. I plead the blood of Jesus over me and mine. I plead the blood of Jesus. I agree with the blood of Jesus. Are you with me? Because it's speaking good things. It's speaking perfect things. Notice this back again in 1 John 4. Go back to verse 16. And we have known. Now listen, we've known it. I've known. Come on, every one of us can say we've known the love of God. But now this is where it gets heavy, revy. And believed it. That is different. We have known it and believed it. Do you know, I had a person ask me today, listen, this isn't being critical. I'm here, I want to help us. When you hear yourself say things like, how could God, how could God allow that? You don't believe God loves you. Why would God do this to me? You don't believe God loves you. Come on, don't argue with me. I know what I'm talking about here. You don't believe God loves you. You've known the love, but you don't believe the love. You believe the love up to this point, but boil past that. Oh, I just, Lord, help me to believe the love. Huh? Help me to believe because, listen, listen, that's what casts the fear out. Ha! And if the fear don't work, the bondage can't work. Where there's bondage, there's fear. Where there's fear, there's torment. Where there's torment, there's a lack of knowing that he loves me. Man, isn't that good, y'all? <laughs> I just don't understand why God would do that. You said it right. I don't understand. You got that part right. You don't understand. He, there's something he don't know. My people perish. The beloved, the covenant ones, for lack of knowledge. What you don't know you can't take hold of. I told a guy today, I love him. I love him. He said it publicly, so I'll say it. He's done seven trips to prison, most of them at Cofield. Got seven numbers. And I'm here to tell you, he's a great man. He's a great man. He is a brother in Christ for sure. I was talking to him. I said, you know what? I said, you have experiential knowledge in some areas that I don't. And I have some experiential knowledge in some areas that you don't. I said, listen, if I got put in prison, I ain't never been there. I said, I'd be in your hip pocket. I'd be in your pocket. Calm down. Calm down. I said, I'd be in your hip pocket. 
Some guy come up to me and say, hey, man, you need some notebook paper? I'd be like, yeah, thanks. Yeah, now you owe him. <laughs> Isn't my right? You just entered a covenant. That's exactly right. <laughs> say, bro, you need these? Wow, he's such a sweetheart. Thanks. Yeah. Now you're my mailman. <laughs> or what? <laughs> Yeah, that's why he's in there for being such a Walmart greeter, you know. Just kind, giving, and nice. I said, but listen, I'd be in your pocket. Why? Because you know something I need to know. You, listen, let me say something. If you ain't asking questions, you're not learning. Bible says wise counsel is good. Bible says by wise counsel is how you make war. All the ways of a man are right in his own eyes, but with counsel is the good brought about. Let's look at this again. We're not in a hurry. We'll end soon as the Lord ends. Verse 16, and we have known and believed. Say, I know the love, and I believe the love. I believe God loves me. Say it. You need to talk like that every day. God loves Jason. God loves Jody. God loves my family. God loves Caleb. God loves Sam. God loves Rilo. God lo I don't want to give anything away. I can't say that yet. God loves us. <laughs> God loves us. He does. But you need to hear yourself talk like that. Your ears need to hear, church. You, you're, you need to hear you saying, God loves me. God loves me and God's not holding any sin against me. Have you ever gave place to the devil? Raise your hand. I'll raise mine first. All you that can't will have a, a deceptive class in the next session, okay? Good. <laughs> I mean, I've created storms. Huh? <laughs> she said, I was the storm. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. yeah. Have I given place to the devil in times? Yes. Knowing I did it? Yeah. Just made provision. Didn't receive the good counsel that was around me. But what I did do, I learned to do, I repented of it. And I've found out, church, I've seen it in my own life and I've seen it in people extremely close to me that I love, my family, that God will take what was meant for bad and he'll somehow, he'll just restructure it, reform it. He'll heat it back down to just a blob of clay. Just get it spinning. Throw that water on it. And then he'll go. And your whole life goes. And you go. And it feels like you're in one of them G-force things. Like Woody hanging his face out of that, that truck. Life ever feel that way to anybody? Oh, boy, I got everybody's attention now. Maybe we ought to talk about that. But somehow, I'm telling you, when favor is on you, favor don't leave just because you made a mistake, saints. Listen, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Hang on, what's repent mean? The Greek word means to change the thinking. That means God says, if I've given that gift to you and if I've called you to it, I'll never change my mind about it. Hallelujah. I didn't make the covenant. 
I, listen, I didn't call myself. I didn't gift myself. I'm speaking for you also. And God, his word said, the gifts and callings of God, he won't change his thinking about it. That's why you can have somebody that has an anointing to sing and they might just use it for the devil and use it for the devil and listen to me. Well, anyway. And just crowds gather because of the gift and the anointing. Whether they ever use it for God or not, God, he's so honored to his word, he, he doesn't pull it back. How come it is you can have a man that says in Galatians 1 twice, I was separated from my mother's womb to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. But what about that same man that spent all them years as Saul of Tarsus? Killing the brethren, killing the brethren, killing the brethren, called to be an apostle, killing the brethren, but he's called to be an apostle, killing the brethren, but he's called to be an apostle, killing the brethren, but he's called to be an apostle. And one day, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Go on into the city. And one divine appointment and everything that the devil had been using got radically changed. And I just, I want to encourage us all. No matter where you find yourself, you begin and continue to confess, my steps are ordered by the Lord. Yeah, but what about, man, my steps are ordered by the Lord. All things work together for my good. Yeah, but all things work together for my good. I found there's just many things in life I have to look back and learn from. Pastor would ask me, he'd say, what would you do different this time? That's a great question. But I promise you this, saint. You stay with the word. Not religion. The word. Stay with his spirit. You just stay sensitive to his voice. You just keep a heart open to God. Knowing this. I know the love and I believe God loves me. Why do you believe God loves you? Do you feel love? Listen, dumb feelings. He said he loved me. That's all I need. He said he loves me. Here's a scripture that comes up in my heart. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I but the Spirit of God, Christ, that lives in me, who loved me <laughs> and gave himself for me. So we have God so loved the world and we have gave himself for me. Isn't that wonderful, y'all? We're getting anything. Say, he loves me. Say this, say, if God be for me, now say it this way, God is love. If love be for me, ooh, isn't that good? Say, God is love. If love be for me, who can be against me? If love be for me. What shall we say to these things? If love be for me, who can be against me? <laughs> Man, that's good, isn't it? Yes. Verse 16, and we have known and believed. We've known it, but we believe it. I choose to believe that God loves me. In spite of me. Why does he love me? Because I'm in a blood covenant. How are you in a blood covenant? Because I am in faith and by faith have been transferred into the one he cut covenant with. So therefore, 
what's his is mine and his standing is my standing. Come on. We've known and believed the covenant love that God has to us. Listen, you can't, you can't, you, we'll use Miss Dunn's term, you can't let the tail get out in front of the dog. You can't love others with Hesed agape, or with just agape, till you know how much God Hesed agapes you. I'm serious when I say this, and this I thank God for His grace that I can say this, because there was many years that I couldn't. But to be offended, hold offense, get my uh, get offended. That is so foreign. I mean, it, it's foreign to hold a grudge overnight is so foreign. I mean, that is, it's just foreign. It don't make sense anymore. Why? Not just because I've practiced and practiced 1 Corinthians 13, the, uh, the doing side of it, but because of also that much and more meditation and believing and receiving, that's how God feels toward me. Brother, when you sin and you're able because of covenant to say, God's not easily offended. God's not touchy. And you learn somehow to just because of the blood and because of the words, you come to God boldly and publicly right after the sin. And you exercise this part of your covenant. I confess it to you, Lord. And I believe by faith that you cleanse me and forgive me. And forgiveness is such a big word, saints, in Greek. It's a total release. It means to release it as though it never was committed. That's hesed agape. Are you with me? That's hesed agape. Covenant love. Let's wrap this up. And we have known and we have believed. We've believed. God so loved the world that whosoever shall believe. We've known and believed the love. Let's think about it this way. Love so loved the world. Love so loved the world that love gave the son of his love. Come on. Love so loved the world that love gave the son of his love that whosoever would believe the love will hold the life of God. <laughs> we've known and we've believed the love. I believe God loves me. Hold your place right there, right quick. Isaiah 43, I believe it is. Thank y'all so much for coming tonight. Yeah, 4325. 4325. Listen, who did God make a blood covenant with? Jesus Christ. And because you're in Christ, you're the heirs. You're in covenant. That means that anything that the covenant partner has, you have access to it. That also means that anything that I have, the covenant partner, Jesus, has access to it. That's why, listen, I go where he says go. I do what he says do, and I only say what I hear him say. And if he's not leading me there, I don't go. If everybody's saying, you got to do this, 
No, I got to obey God. Or you can't do that. If God's leading me to do it, I have to do it. Why? Because I'm in covenant. Isn't this good, y'all? Isaiah 43, 25. I... The word even is in italics, so just put a line through it. That's added by translators, and it, it's better like this. I, I am he that blots out your transgression. Saints, we're not in a covenant of atonement, which means to cover. It's in your, the English New Testament one time in Romans 3 or 4. We've received the atonement, Jesus Christ. In the Greek, the word atonement is nowhere in the New Testament because atone means to cover. Our sins aren't covered. They're blotted out. They're what we're we're not we're not just covered we're cleansed from. Are you with me? Huh? Far as east is from west, he's removed our sins from us. Not just covered them up, and they're not just swept up under a rug under heaven somewhere. They've been removed from us. You've been not not listen forgiven to the point of cleansed from, removed from, and they've been removed from you blotted out not there can't find them can't dig them up let me say it this way let the past pass huh? you can't hold on or reach under the things that are before you until you forgetting those things which are behind however they came about and however the gruesome, uh, gruesome the process is one day at a time. We've learned that's a huge key to staying in peace is just get through today. Just get through today. The Lord is my shepherd today. My steps are ordered today. My, my belly's full today. I have a roof over my head today. And I give God praise and thanksgiving that he's been faithful to me today. The covenant partner. You with me? Then tomorrow is today. You don't think 30 days ahead. You don't think six months down the road in, in, in this type of settings. You see what I'm saying? Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to make Jesus Lord. <laughs> and, he, and I'm going to be sensitive to him to direct every step I make. Huh? Yes, sir. Jesus said, take no thought saying. That's the covenant man in red told us that. That's a command for good. Take no thought saying. You know you're taking the thoughts. Listen, it's okay to have a bunch of thoughts. It's not okay to take them. And this is how you know when you're taking them. Take no thought saying. When you begin to say it, that's when you're starting to take the thoughts. That's where unbelief will start trying to take root it starts here and it gets into here and you start giving it life and giving it life and all of a sudden it starts getting in your heart and if the cares of this world entering in they choke the word it can't choke out the word without the process allowed of entering in is it tough yes yeah, tough at times what do you do I'm glad you asked I spend a lot of time in the Word and I do a lot of praying in the Spirit with the focus of I'm building myself up on my most holy faith. Why is it most holy faith? Why is it the most separated faith you can offer? Because when you pray in the Spirit, you don't, your head is not involved. So when you usurp and bypass your own thinking, it becomes holy. And it means to charge yourself. It is the Bible way of plugging yourself in poop, bloop, to a charger. And you charge yourself up. And you just, it, it, the only agenda is I'm building myself up on my most holy faith. And you just start praying in the Spirit. You don't try to make nothing happen. You don't try to get solical and create a feeling, create a rush. You're obeying the Word. The covenant said, when I do this, this is what happens. So I've known and I believe that when I do this, this is what's happening. Then you find yourself the next day, two days later, all of a sudden you have unction or you have peace or a door opens up and the Spirit of God reminds you that's what you prayed out. You with me, anybody? Isaiah 43, 25. I, I am he that blots out your transgressions, watch, for my own sake. 
Isn't that wonderful, y'all? For my sake, God said, I, I, I blot your transgressions out. Why would he say, I'm blotting your transgressions out for my sake? Listen, I'm going to tell you, so he can bless you. So he can manifest his good to you. He said, for my sake, I'm blotting out your transgression. That's how much he wants to manifest hesed agape to you. Covenant love. Gift exchange. Verse 20, uh, 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 and I will not, I like this word, remember. Let's focus on this word, remember, but let's break it up. To remember. To put it back together. To remember something. I will not remember your sins. Aren't, I mean, wow. He is not remembering my sins. One of the hardest things for me, just being vulnerable, is to not remember my sins. Because I know me. You only know the me you know. Now, I'm not a hypocrite and a liar, but I'm just saying, I only know the you I know. I know me. No man knows the things of a man or the, the spirit of another man except that man. Isn't this good, y'all? And listen, the covenant God, he knows me better than I know. He knows the motive and the intent of heart and yet his attitude is for my sake I blot your sins out so I can bless you so I can manifest the covenant and the exchange of gifts to you you know where all the you know where the treasure chest of God is the Holy Spirit and you have received of his spirit. Verse 26, remember that. Put me in remembrance and let us plead together. Declare you that you may be justified. He just told you what to plead with. Are you following me? I, I am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake and, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. What am I to put him in remembrance of? Well, his word, Pastor Jay, exactly. In this setting, what would his word look like? Father, I thank you that you've blotted out my transgressions for your own sake and you will not remember my sins. I bring that. I put you in remembrance of that. I put me in remembrance of that and I Plead my case with those words. Come on, somebody. That's pleading words right there. <laughs> declare, declare what? Verse 25, that you may be justified. One guy said it this way, and I like it. Justified means justified, never done it. Justified means justified, never done it. <laughs> Let's end with this. Four, first John 4 again. We have known and we have believed. I believe the love of God. We've believed the love that God has toward us. God is love. He don't just have love. He don't just show love. He is love. May we start seeing love as a person. God is love. And he that lives in love lives in God and God lives in him. I mean, just a huge thought. Everybody look at me, please. Think about this. God lives in you. 
the creator. I mean, if he slung all that into the universe and made it make sense, I believe he can work this out. Come on. Yeah. Verse 17. And in this is love with us made perfect or brought to perfection. Now keep that word perfect in, in range right here. In that is love with us made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Everybody say perfect. Verse 18, there is no fear in covenant love, but perfect, there it is again, perfected love. That perfected love, saints, keep it connected to verse 17. Love with us being perfected. And just listen to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it and, and bring it to a head here. We've known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that lives in love lives in God, and love lives in him. In that is love with us made perfect. There is no fear in love where love is being perfected. Because that love that's being perfected will purge out the fear and the torment in me. That makes sense, don't it? What is the thing that the Bible says will catheterize, remove? Boy, I've experienced it many times when I'm talking about a removal of fear in that area. A removal. Just, I'm, I mean, breakthrough. Not there. No longer a part of your life. The thing is covenant love being more developed and more developed and more developed. First of all, in the sense of how he is toward me and who he is in me. Then that begins to translate living it out through you to others. But you can't do that till you first of all know and believe how he feels about you. Understanding that is how it becomes foreign to hold a grudge. Because I know this, God is not holding a grudge toward me. And when you truly know that, you absolutely know I will violate my place in the covenant if I hold a grudge towards you. I can't do that. But it grows more than I can't do it. It's I don't do that. that love doesn't do that. I can't do that. I'm not trusting God if I do that. And really all I'm doing is restricting me. This is a huge question. If, the payment, if I believe the payment is enough for my sin, why can't I let it be enough for your sin? <laughs> I mean, that gets home in a hurry. If the payment is enough for my sin, then I have to let it be enough for your sin. Are you with me, church? Closing up, verse 18, there is no fear in love. Th say that with me. There is no fear in love. Let's read verse 18 all together. We'll close. Ready, please? There is no fear in love, but perfected love casts out fear because fear has torment he that fears is not yet perfected in love now don't let it condemn you just keep growing and keep saying God loves me 
God, God loves me. God loves me. Because notice this. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to notice this. You are not the one that has the torment. Fear is what has the torment. The reason torment is there is because fear is there. And I understand that. I have to combat the fear. Oh, that's good. I have to combat the fear with nothing natural, saints. I have to combat the fear by immersion in God loves me. 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 Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you that my best interest, best interest is on your front burner. I thank you that you love me. You are not holding any sin against me. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. God loves me. God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. I'm telling you how some of you how to get through this thing, man. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so he loves me. There is no fear in love but perfected love, that love that is in you. That being that being perfected, brought to more development. Listen, this is so good, church. I don't have to cast the fear out. I can't. Perfected love in me. It will, it just makes no room for fear anymore. It purges out the fear. Isn't that wonderful? There's a time to rebuke fear. When the spirit of fear but there's also a time listen just immerse in the love of God and it will catheterize yes, sir. Oh, it will cast out the fear because fear is what brings the torment we love him because he first loved us if he first loved us he still loves us isn't that wonderful? Did you get anything out of this tonight? Hallelujah. Stand on your feet if you would, please. Thank you for coming so much tonight. It wouldn't be near as fun without you here. <laughs> oh, God, I give you praise. I praise you and I thank you for your love. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am going to plead on these people's behalf with this scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to John 14, 21, I'm asking you to receive this, church. You said, he that has my commandments and they keep them, which would be the law of love and anything Jesus would tell us to do, from taking out the trash to anything else. You said... If we do that, we love you. And you said, he that loves you will be loved. That's manifesto. Be loved by the Father who is love. And I will love him, Jesus said. And Jesus, you said you would manifest, manifest yourself to them people. I pray in the name of Jesus over these people, Lord. Father, we have an ear and a heart to hear you and obey you. And I pray and we believe we receive right now. We hold this scripture and this prayer up against the mountain. He that has his commands and keeps them, he it is that loves Jesus. We love him. And Father, we repent and ask for your total cleansing from any area that we've not loved you in. And corporately, we come together with this, this vein of thought and we believe 
that we receive the cleansing from it. You said he it is that loves me and you said we would be loved by the Father who is love. And Jesus, you said you would love them people and you said you would manifest yourself to us. So Father, we ask right now and we believe we receive the love of God. We know it and we believe it and we receive manifestation of the love of God. You said that you would perfect the things that concern us and that you would never forsake the work of your own hand or your own mercy. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive it in Jesus' name. We believe, oh God, if love be for us, who could be against us? We believe that our steps are ordered by the Lord who is love. We believe that all things are working together in process for our good. We believe that love has and will continue to manifest itself to us and through us. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Men's meeting in the morning if you're able to, 6.30.